Welcome back, this is Fire675, bringing you another Firefall Battleframe guide. This video will cover the Accord Assault Battleframe. The Assault is one of the five free basic frames that every player is allowed to pilot from the beginning of the game. I usually recommend new players to start with this frame, as it is very forgiving compared to some of the other Accord frames. The primary weapon has a generous amount of splash damage to assist new players poor aim, and the frame is very average in terms of hit points, weight, and foot speed, which assists in its survivability. The two terms that best sum up this frame are moderate and average, but that's not a bad thing. Think of it kind of like Mario in Mario Kart. I think Red 5 made some real good choices when designing this frame's visual model. The armor looks tough and durable, but you can tell it's built for speed. Some of the elements of this frame remind me of a muscle car. The frame has a very aggressive style with some impressive looking thruster generator build-outs that look more menacing as you level up the frame. Keep in mind that the Accord frames share all of their abilities and usable weapons with the advanced frames based upon the Accord frame. So in this case, the Accord Assault frame is the parent frame of the Tiger Claw and the Fire Cat. The Accord Assault was originally designed with one primary weapon. This weapon is known as the Plasma Cannon. The Plasma Cannon is the middle child of the three cannon weapons. The Thermal Cannon, usable only by the Fire Cat frame, has a slower projectile, lower damage per round, but a larger blast area of 3 meters, while the Fusion Cannon, usable only by the Tiger Claw frame, has a much faster projectile, higher damage per round, with a very low bullet drop, but pays for this with a much smaller blast area of only 1 meter so it requires much more accuracy. The plasma cannon lobs large balls of explosive plasma downrange at a moderate ballistic speed with a splash damage radius of 2 meters. Due to this slowed ballistic speed, the plasma rounds are subject to trajectory drop at range. The slow speed also means you may have to aim ahead of a moving target so the round gets to the spot at the same time the target does. The alt fire of the plasma cannon shoots a shotgun like scatter of nine plasmoids. This alt fire will shoot in a regular pattern that cones out at range, but the plasmoids will disappear when they reach a maximum range. If the plasmoids hit a surface at less than 45 degree angle, they'll ricochet. I've found that the alt fire is helpful in attacking flying enemies, as the aiming calculations needed to hit a flying moving object while flying yourself, using a slow projectile that drops can be difficult to master. The alt fire plasmoids move at a much faster rate of speed to take some of the guesswork out of the equation. There's an Ares Unlockable Blueprint variation of the plasma cannon. This alternate primary weapon option is called the Dragonborn Plasma Cannon. The primary fire is exactly the same as the normal plasma cannon, but the alt fire is a short range flamethrower that does lower initial damage than the primary fire but applies a damage over time effect on targets that were hit. The rate of fire of the alt fire is noticeably slower than that of the primary fire. Patch 1.1 introduced a third option for the Accord Assault Frame. This new weapon is called the Flak Cannon. As the name suggests, its primary fire shoots out a spread of plasma that detonates when it reaches a target or when it reaches its maximum range. This is a great weapon for massive AoE damage when fighting large numbers of smaller enemies, but it is also good for fighting airborne enemies. The alt fire of the flat cannon has an interesting effect. Instead of doing damage, the alt fire consumes ammo to refresh some of your jump jet energy and give you a boost in the direction you are aiming. This has led to some assault pilots to embarking on Icarus flights. Using a combination of afterburner, the flat cannon, and ammunition packs, as well as some other consumable items such as mosquito wings, some players have flown so high that the ground even disappears. Lord help whatever is under them if they crater down within range of a viable target. Moving on to the abilities. The Accord Assault Frame can equip abilities that either increase mobility and or do damage. One of the first abilities you are awarded is called Crater. I've always said that Crater is one of the most rewarding abilities in the game to use, even if it's not always effective. When you activate Crater, you'll come rocketing down at extreme speeds and crash into the ground sending a shockwave out from the point of impact. 
Think of it as Firefall's Mario Butt Stomp. This shockwave will damage, snare, and knock back any enemies within the blast range. The more distance you travel downwards, the higher the damage done, but the more difficult it becomes to properly target your landing zone. Because of the increased damage output from longer falls, using Afterburner to gain elevation before triggering Crater is a useful combination. Crater can be used to save your life from fall damage, if you find yourself in that dire situation. There is an Ares Unlockable variant of Crater called Shielded Crater. This skill activates in the same fashion, but the blast area is reduced a little bit. Also, when you land, you create a shielded dome around the point of impact. This shield will not allow enemy units to pass into the dome, nor will they be able to fire into the dome. Friendly targets may pass through the shield at will and shoot from the inside out, but all projectiles, regardless of origin, are blocked from the outside in. A second ability available to assaults is Afterburner. This ability is all about mobility. When activated, it will propel your frame towards the direction you are aiming at with a rocket boost. This ability does not draw from your jump jet energy pool, so you can actually recover jet energy while this ability is in effect, and continue to jet afterwards. This ability is great for climbing mountains or hard to reach areas. As discussed before, it can be used to add damage to crater by increasing altitude. Afterburner is also great for entering a fight or for retreating if you find yourself on the wrong end of the stick and you need to find a place to heal up. By default, Afterburner can charge up to two usages. This number can be modified by prefixes and by red, purple, orange modules that add to max deployable stats. As with all multiple use abilities, once depleted of all charges, the first cooldown will recharge one use, then the cooldown will restart to recharge the next charge in turn. Afterburner can be used while you have glider wings deployed, allowing for a burst of speed or a gain of elevation. There is an Ares Unlockable Blueprint variant of Afterburner called the Cannonball Afterburner. This ability was added in the 1.1 patch. When activated, this ability will ball your frame up and it will start to spin as you are propelled towards the direction you were aiming. The boost you get from this ability will carry you further than a single use of Afterburner. If you collide with any enemy targets while cannonballing, you will knock them back and do some damage to them. This ability can be used to get massive altitude quickly by aiming straight up and activating it. A downside of this ability is the fact that it can only ever hold a single charge, unlike the multiple charges of the normal Afterburner. A third ability available to the Assault is Overcharge. When activated, this ability will give your frame a buff that lasts for 8 seconds. The buff will increase your rate of fire 20% and your weapon will not use any ammunition while it's active. This ability could be thought of as a self only, slightly less effective power field. At level 15, you can equip Burn Jets. Once you activate this ability, your player will hover at that altitude and project flames from your boot boosters for about 5 seconds. Enemies caught in the flames will take damage. This ability may occasionally leave patches of flames on the ground that will continue to damage enemies that stand in it. In my opinion, this ability looks really cool but does not put out the amount of damage needed to offset the fact that you become a flying, floating target with very little mobility for the duration of the effect. At level 24, you can equip Bombs Away. This ability deploys a barrage of bombs in the general area you are aiming at. I find this ability underwhelming, just like Burn Jets. The tooltip shows that each bomblet has a splash area of 1.5 meters, but since they spread out in such a large area, it's difficult to target smaller groups. If you add Max Deployable Module, it increases the number of bomblets released. I would rather have a multiple charge ability that can store up more activations than have more bombs that simply go where they want to. The Accord Assault's HKM ability is Shockwave. This ability sends out a wave of energy in a forward direction that does direct damage to anything it hits. This ability moves fairly quickly and extends out 15 meters. It does high damage and can pass through objects. On to the perks. The Assault family exclusive basic perk is called Assault Nanites. If you equip this perk, you will get 10% bonus HP from health packs picked up and from health packs used from your inventory bar. It also grants you a passive 5% movement speed bonus to you 
any squad mates within 100 meters, and any other allies that are within 8 meters. Compared to some of the other base class unique perks that regen HP on kills, when doing damage, or when below a threshold health level, this perk seems less helpful. The movement speed bonus does make it worth one perk point in my book though. The level 10 basic perk unlock for the assault is quick flexing servos. This perk increases your jump height 3 meters. I won't recommend this perk, nor will I tell you to stay away from it. Try it out if you're curious. It does add a little more mobility as you use less jet power for the same flight but you likely already have Afterburner to augment your movement. At level 20, you unlock Plasma Enthusiast. This is a great perk that translates well to a few other frames. It increases damage done with Plasma and Energy Weapons by 10%. Obviously, this includes the Plasma Cannon and the Dragonborn Plasma Cannon, but it also includes the Tiger Claws Fusion Cannon, the Rhino's Heavy Laser Machine Gun, the Mammoth's heavy plasma machine gun, the Electron's shock rail, the Accord Engineer's Tesla rifle, and the Arsenal's ability weapon, particle beam. At level 30, you unlock Invigorate. This passive ability will activate when you use any other ability. It will increase the movement speed and attack speed of all allies by 15% for 6 seconds if they are within 10 meters. Downside to this, in my eyes, are the long animations of many of the assault abilities. Depending on your altitude when you activate Creator, you may not get to take any advantage of this buff at all. It does mesh well with Overcharge though, further increasing your rate of fire. I think the strength of this skill is in a large scale environment where you can hand out this buff to many other players. Finally at level 40 you unlock Second Wind. This perk works much like the Second Wind effect in the Borderlands series without requiring you to be incapacitated first. If you're under 30% health and kill 5 or more enemies within a 5 second time frame, you'll be healed for 60% of your max HP. There is an internal cooldown for this effect though. Outside of the assault perks, some of the other options to look at might be Necrotic Bite, which is a level 20 recluse perk that increases all types of damage against humanoid targets by 10%. Level 10 Arsenal Perk, Combat Veteran, which increases reload and weapon switch speeds by 15%. The Level 20 Bastion Perk, Reactive Armor, reduces the first hit of damage every 10 seconds by 25%. The Level 20 Electron Perk, Magnetic Shielding, which reduces all plasma and bullet damage by 15%. Chosen Hunter, uh, which is an achievement unlock perk that increases all damage dealt to chosen targets by 10%. You can always flush out your remaining perk set with survival perks that increase movement speed or reduce other types of damage. Well that's it. I hope you found this guide entertaining and informative. If you have any questions or would like to see a guide on a topic I haven't covered yet, please comment down below. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when I produce my next video. Now get out there and kick some chosen ass.